Okay, so um, uh, we created the object, we created the base, the base, for the base. And uh, what we are going to do now is uh, actually uh, making the G-code happen, right? So we're gonna, again, we have two different models for making G-code. Uh, Spira, which is base mod, plain and simple. Uh, of course, it only works with objects that have one single wall. And then we have this uh, multi, which is uh, the logic we came up with uh, to print with multiple walls object. Um, it also works with single objects, so we could potentially use it, but uh, it has a few parameters uh, um, which uh, require you know more testing, thinking through, so it's not as straightforward as Spiral. So if you're starting out and you're not sure what's happening, you need to get confident with the, object, with the, with the tool and everything, what you want to do is use Spiral. Um, so we click uh, on the red button and, and the new the new windows pop up. So uh, let's call it uh, base final. And as before, we need to upload a set of objects. So uh, we put the base we just designed and we put also the object we previously designed, which is this, you know. Okay, there we are. Uh, a very important thing, uh, I said it before, it's, it's written pretty much everywhere, but I'll just say it one more time. Uh, slice up only take care of the G-code, which is strictly uh, related to your geometry. So pretty much it defines and translates it to G-code every line you see. Doesn't do nothing else, which means all the add instruction, which has, you know, a set of instruction that your machine need to perform before printing. Uh, I don't know, like uh, go home, uh, move there, uh, eat up the extruder, whatever you usually do with your machine, uh, they are not included. So you need to write them down yourself. Uh, there are like some instructions in our resources on how to do that. You could also copy paste uh, uh, that G code of a file that you previously sliced in some other software and, and use that. Um, you can also ask for help on the forum. And as a matter of fact, we have a post where we are trying to collect, you know, add and tail G code for different type of machine that our user use. Uh, it's, it's pretty empty right now. So if you feel like adding to that, that would be great. Uh, anyway, you need to import it uh, from a text file so that you, it will include in your G code. So here I have my head file for, for my CR pen and here I have my tail file as well. And there we go. Uh, once I did that, I can go on and, well, we have the, the display uh, tab as always. And the first thing we need to do is actually place the object uh, on the bed. And in order to place the object, we need to define if we have a Cartesian or Delta printer. If we go with the Delta printer, uh, you will see what happens is the bed is a circle and the object goes to the middle. Otherwise, zero, 0 for Cartesian is in the upper left corner. You know, you, you can change the size and you will see that this, this rectangle adapting or whatever. Um, and then the position. The position is actually the offset from the reference point. So in case of Cartesian, you may want to move it uh, a few millimeters to the left and back. So you're not you're not against you know the, the, the edge of your machine. Okay, now it's placed, it's in the bed, uh, shouldn't have any problem, and we're gonna move to the flow. So flow control. First, of course, uh, set the speed in millimeter per second, that's the feed rate. So uh, I like to go quite slow, 18 works well for me. And then you know the choose how to compute the math. Now, if you use filament, just use filament standards that will do whatever, what every other slicer does pretty much. Uh, take the length of the extrusion, its cross-section, and compare it to the cross-section of the filament you're feeding in. Uh, same value you normally use should work well. Uh, if you have a clay extruder or, or a pellet extruder, then, uh, well, you can of course use filament standard if you already have a profile that you know that works well with that extruder. Uh, otherwise, uh, this uh, cross-section time multiplier could be a bit more convenient for you to, you know, fine tune and make your test. What it does, just calculate the cross-section, multiplies by the multiplier, and that's it, nothing else. So it's, it's a tool you can use. Uh, I print with filament, I'll stay with filament standard. Uh, well, of course, relative versus absolute extrusion, depending on whatever you, you like to use, uh, I stick with relative. Remember uh, to put your M83 or M82 
in your head accordingly to what you choose here. So if you start printing and make weird noise and, and nothing come out, you probably uh, did something wrong with this. So remember M83, I believe it's relative, M82 is, is absolute. And then, well, filament diameter, whatever you're using, it's 175 for me, extrusion multiplier if you need it, I don't, and then the nozzle diameter, pretty basic. And this is that, the flow will come out just fine. It's not a hundred parameters you need to, to fine tune. Then you go with the fan. So for example, I like to place it a bit later on. So I don't know, maybe layer four and not too fast, 75% for me. If you don't use it, move this to zero and it will use you um, 106 billy. So yeah, this will do. Uh, finally, a few advanced uh, parameters. Actually, uh, what I want to focus on is, is quite important is the spiral base spacing. So this is something that if you have a, a FDM machine, you probably don't, don't want to even worry about because the, the, the full value will just do. But if you have a, a clay extruder, uh, that's probably one of your bigger issues. So uh, let's focus on the area of interest. Let me find the exact point. Uh, Let's see if I can see it a bit better. Okay, uh, let's focus on this area here in the middle of the screen, right? Right now you can see all the line of the base and then it starts very low. The spiral starts very low on the base. Uh, by adjusting this parameter, if you move it to one, uh, let's make it this calculation, you, know, you now see that the spiral is just starts up at one layer up of the base. Now, whatever you choose to do, just be aware that the flow will ramp up gradually anyway, because it keeps into account the layer eight at that specific point. So uh, your value will be fine tuned to this. Uh, however, you can experiment and do whatever you prefer. And then you have this value, which adjusts the seam spacing, which allow you to create more space here at the connection of the base and the spiral of the base and the, and, and the boundary. So let's just to make an example, make it very small. Uh, you now see here is, is, is very, very close, but probably wrong. And uh, in fact, you can also do it very, very wide, which probably breaks the shape. So uh, one by default is the extruder wide, whatever you, you're using, but uh, bit wider works well for me. So that's pretty much it. Um, the G-code is set, it's ready to go. All you need to do is download it and save it whatever you normally save it. Uh, so base final G-code G -code, and that's it. Save it. Maybe you can open it up, check that everything is okay, but uh, it, it will be. And you can now put it in your machine and just, uh, you know, Print it out. Enjoy, and if you have any problem, please uh, join this course forum. Uh, I will be able to answer questions that will help you out and maybe help out some other user. Uh, thank you, and have a good one. Bye.